Friends, let me tell you a story that sounds like it's from a superhero movie, but it's very real. Imagine a young boy in a small Indian village who never cried, no matter how badly he was hurt. He'd fall, get deep cuts, even break bones, yet he'd just get up and keep playing. His parents were baffled and worried. Why didn't their son ever show pain? This wasn't bravery, it was something far more dangerous. One day, he bit off a piece of his tongue and didn't even notice until he saw the blood. Doctors had no answers. Some villagers thought he was blessed, others thought he was cursed. But this gift was a hidden danger. His body had no alarm system to warn him of harm. He'd chew his fingers until they bled or walk on hot coals without flinching. Severe burns and injuries shocked everyone, except him. This boy's story introduces us to a rare, mysterious condition that challenges our understanding of pain. It forces us to rethink something we take for granted, pain itself. We see pain as negative, but what if you couldn't feel it at all? His life shows pain is not just a feeling, it's a vital messenger. Without it, we are left vulnerable in ways hard to imagine. His story isn't about a superhero, but about surviving an extraordinary, perilous challenge. This real-life case highlights a profound medical puzzle. It's a reminder, pain protects us, even when we wish it didn't. Sometimes, what seems like a superpower is actually a silent threat. So, what is this strange condition? It's called congenital insensitivity to pain or CIP. Congenital means you're born with it. Insensitivity to pain means you can't feel physical pain. Imagine your body's alarm system is broken, no warning when you touch a hot stove or get hurt. For people with CIP, this alarm never goes off. It's not about being tough. Their bodies simply can't send or receive pain signals. They can feel touch and temperature, but not the agony of burning or freezing. They might know something is hot, but won't feel the pain that tells them to pull away. Think of it like a disconnected wire. The message never reaches the brain. That's why a child with CIP might have a broken arm and not even realize it. This is extremely rare, only a handful of cases worldwide. Many doctors have never seen it, leading to misunderstanding. People with CIP aren't faking it and they feel emotions like anyone else. The only thing missing is physical pain. But that single missing piece changes everything about how they live. They must navigate a world full of unseen threats. CIP is a rare condition, but its impact is profound. Let's break down the science simply. Our bodies have neurons, tiny wires that carry messages between the brain and body. When you get hurt, pain receptors send a signal up your spinal cord to your brain. Your brain processes this as pain a fast, efficient warning system. In CIP, this system is broken due to a genetic mutation. Often, it's a change in the SCNIA gene, which builds a crucial part of pain neurons. If this gene is mutated, the doorway for pain signals is blocked. So, even if you prick your finger, the pain signal can't start its journey. It's like trying to send a letter with a sealed mailbox. The message never gets delivered. That's why people with CIP feel nothing, even when injured. Several genes can cause CIP, each affecting the pain pathway differently. But the result is the same, no pain. The condition is inherited. Often, parents are just carriers. If both pass on the mutated gene, the child can be born with CIP. Understanding these genes is key to understanding and maybe one day treating CIP. It's a tiny error with life-changing consequences. Living without pain isn't a superpower, it's a daily risk. Everyday objects become threats, hot coffee, sharp objects, even biting into food. Children with CIP often suffer repeated injuries, broken bones, cuts, burns, without realizing it. This can lead to infections, improper healing and permanent damage. Eye injuries are common as they might rub their eyes too hard and not feel it. As they grow, people with CIP learn to be hypervigilant, checking their bodies for injuries. They avoid risky activities and develop routines to stay safe. The mental toll is heavy. They must consciously think about safety all the time. 
Repeated injuries can cause early arthritis, joint damage, and dental problems. Some have shorter life expectancies as serious conditions may go unnoticed. Life without pain means living without one of the body's most essential shields. Every day is a balancing act between caution and danger. The absence of pain changes everything. For families, CIP means constant worry and vigilance. Parents notice something's wrong when their child doesn't cry from injuries. Diagnosis is often slow, leaving families feeling isolated. Once they understand, a new challenge begins, keeping their child safe. Parents become detectives, checking for injuries multiple times a day. They child-proof their homes and monitor playtime closely. As the child grows, they must learn to live in a body that doesn't warn them of harm. Teaching a child about pain they've never felt is like describing color to someone born blind. The emotional and financial toll is significant. Frequent doctor visits, constant supervision and stress. Siblings may feel neglected or overly responsible. The family's life revolves around managing the condition. Their love and vigilance are the invisible shield that keeps their child safe. Diagnosing CIP isn't simple. There's no single test. It starts with a history of repeated painless injuries. Doctors rule out other conditions, then perform physical and neurological exams. People with CIP can feel touch and temperature, but not pain. This specific loss of pain with other senses intact is a key clue. Genetic testing confirms the diagnosis by identifying mutations in genes like SCN9A. This helps families understand inheritance and future risks. Diagnosis can be challenging. Many doctors have never seen a case. Symptoms may be mistaken for other disorders or even child abuse. Finding knowledgeable doctors is crucial. A correct diagnosis ends uncertainty and opens the door to proper care. It's the first step to managing life with CIP. Awareness is key for early recognition and support. Is there a cure for CIP? Sadly, no. It's a genetic condition written into a person's DNA. No pill or surgery can restore pain sensation. The focus is on education and injury prevention. Families learn to use sight and touch to check for injuries. Regular checkups with specialists, dentists, orthopedists, eye doctors are essential. Injuries must be treated aggressively to prevent complications. Physical and occupational therapy help with safe movement and joint health. Custom protective gear can reduce risk. The goal minimize harm, maximize quality of life. Knowledge and vigilance are the best tools for living with CIP. People with CIP hold a unique key for science. Studying them reveals how pain works and how we might treat it better. Scientists focus on genes like SCN9A, hoping to develop new painkillers that block pain at its source. Unlike opioids, these drugs could offer relief without addiction or dangerous side effects. CIP research confirms pain's vital role in survival. It also uncovers links between pain and other senses, like smell. People with CIP who participate in research are heroes, helping unlock new treatments. Their rare condition is a natural experiment, showing what happens when pain is missing. The secrets in their DNA could help millions suffering from chronic pain. Their daily challenges may lead to breakthroughs for everyone. Science learns from their struggle, and so can we. Their experience could change the future of pain management. What can we do? Start by learning and sharing information about CIP. Awareness reduces misunderstanding and misjudgment. Support research. Funding rare disease studies can lead to breakthroughs for all. Donate to advocacy groups or participate in fundraising. Offer empathy and practical help to families affected by rare diseases. Create inclusive, supportive communities to reduce isolation. Encourage healthcare providers to learn about rare conditions. Advocate for policies that support affected families. Share stories to humanize rare conditions and inspire compassion. Together, we can build a world where no one faces this challenge alone. Let's be the support system they need. Every act of understanding makes a difference. 
The journey is hard, but with awareness and support, it can be less lonely.